Hey YouTube, this is Bill. Uh, this is pretty much a part two video of my original very first video that I had two in stereo Bose S1 Pros feeding into the new Bose Sub 2. And now that, that is an incredible system. This is more of a micro system, one S1 Pro over a subwoofer using Bluetooth, one cable and a power source. So this is the subwoofer that I'm reviewing today. It's called the KRK-10S. It's been out for a while. And I wanna emphasize, this is not a live sound subwoofer. This is a studio subwoofer. So this is what producers are using, mix, mixing engineers in, in small studios. And it goes much lower than a live sound subwoofer. It goes down to below 30 Hertz where live sound subwoofers play at a much louder volume and they usually don't go down much below 40 hertz. So they have that mid bass punch for kick drums and bass guitars and these go lower so uh, studio producers can fine tune the bass when they're recording. Another feature that a studio subwoofer often has that the live subwoofers never have, which is unfortunate, but they don't, and that is a bypass switch. So it's right here. I'm using a Fender bypass switch. It does not come with it. You have to purchase it separately, but it's very reasonable. And what that does is, again, the producer has it on the floor, and as they're recording a track or tweaking it, they, with their foot, they disengage the subwoofer, and they hear how it sounds, and then they click it again with their foot, and all of a sudden the, the subwoofer comes on and they decide if there's too much bass or too little, and they keep a being it back and forth until they have it just right. I, as someone who is playing backing tracks, I love it because I can set up my subwoofer by clicking it again off, and then I can bring up the volume, I click it on, bring in the bass, and I can really fine tune the bass by a being it. The old method, of home theater is you would listen to something at the at the listening position at the couch and then you would run behind the subwoofer and, and lower the lower the controls the volume the low pass filter and it's very hard to remember they they call that uh, memory by ear I, I can't do it so this this is wonderful that you can do it from across the room the cable is nice and long i did purchase a, a different brand and the cable was like three feet and it was the same price, and I returned it immediately and got this, this Fender foot switch. Is, um, it's, it's a very nice long cable. You can have this basically across the room. So this subwoofer I've had for a while, there, there are some downsides to this I want you to be aware of. Again, since, since it's a studio subwoofer, uh, it does not have a pole mount. And that's, that's, um, that's a downside in my book. So without the pole mount, uh, you have no choice, you have to bring a stand, which isn't a deal breaker, but it's, it's nice to be able to mount one light speaker over a subwoofer, but this, this uh, you cannot do, there's no pole mount. Another downside or negative that I, I wanna point out is, uh, again, since it's not intended to be used for mobile use, it stays in the studio in one spot, it doesn't have any handles. And it's not the heaviest subwoofer, it's about 40 pounds or so. But without any handles, um, I kind of give it a bear hug and, and press it against my chest to carry it. But I'm just uh, hoping I don't, my hands don't slip and drop it with carrying it that way. So that's not the greatest thing, not to have any handles. Again, a studio subwoofer is not meant to be played at live levels that musicians uh, need. So a bass guitarist, drummers, uh, this is gonna run out of steam where the, pr the producer in the studio doesn't need to go uh, up to those kind of DB levels. People on the previous video asked me uh, to help them figure out the setup. So it's very simple. There's a line out on the S1 Pro, one cable right here. This is called the TRS cable and it's different from a guitar cable even though it looks the same, but there the difference is those two black notches, guitar cable, TS cable only has one. And you want to make sure to use a TRS cable because using a TS guitar cable from the line out of the S1 Pro will decrease your, your output by six decibels, which is considerable. So definitely 
you want to use the TRS cable. Okay, my setting on the volume, I'm on channel three. I'm using Bluetooth for a simple setup. I don't want to go into the subwoofer first. I would add um, a number of cables. I just want to keep this as simple as possible, even though I'm losing some fidelity and headroom by, by doing this setup. I'm using channel three Bluetooth, and I have it pretty much at noon, but uh, some tracks, as you're gonna hear from my demonstration, uh, sometimes I need to go up to the three o'clock position or so, because the tracks are recorded lower, or maybe you need to back off the volume at 11. Depend it really depends on the kind of music you're playing. Okay, here are your connections on the back. So the TRS cable from the S1 Pro is going into the subwoofer. And again, TRS on this side also. Another cable you can use would be this cable, which would be TRS on quarter inch, would go into the S1 Pro, and then you have your male XLR into the subwoofer. I particularly like this cable because the XLR connection is more stable uh, in case someone trips on it, possibly um, this would be, this would stay in more of a chance than the, the, the quarter inch. On the back of the subwoofer, these are my settings. So when you hear the music, uh, you might want to have a, an idea, a reference, a starting point. So my volume is at almost three o'clock. And this subwoofer, again, as a studio subwoofer, has complete uh, crossover controls. And I have it set at the highest, which is 90 Hertz. I have it set high because um, Bose, actually they set their crossover at 150 Hertz uh, when they use their sub one and sub two. But this, this is the highest, this will go up to is 90. And the sub, the uh, Pro S1 Pro uh, goes down to about 60, 60 Hertz is its lowest. So this, uh, you're, you're trying to match them up between the highs and the lows. Studio, sub, studio producers would probably, they wouldn't want it so high. It adds a little more distortion or boominess. So they, they would probably lower down to the 80 position or even 70. I'm, there's one power cable out. I'm going into my expert power station that runs this with no problem at all. It even ran my sub too. So I love this unit. You've probably seen it in other videos. Here is the connection for the foot switch. And it goes right here to your my fender foot switch on and off. Nice clicked. I just wish it had a light. I wish it had a, a, some type of visual that would tell me if it was on and off. But the subwoofer, when you see my um, demonstration, will it does have a light on it, which many subwoofers don't have, I believe. So this is a great unit. I've had it for a while. It's been very reliable. And the, the newer subwoofers coming on the market in 2021, uh, they, they go into app control. I know Bose has an app control. And, but I, I really love the foot switch because it's instantaneous. You don't have to start going through menus. And so this is, this is my preference. And that's what the professionals use. Again, like I said, in a studio. A, B, off and on with a click of a foot switch. It's really wonderful. I thought I would share this with you. Uh, this is the smallest speaker stand I could find. And again, the, speak, the Bose S1 Pro is super light, less than 16 pounds. And I'm just thinking of maybe I, in a home situation where you, you just want a Bluetooth speaker, you don't have an audience in front of you, and you're sitting on a couch, you don't need a speaker high up. So I, I was looking for something at ear level, and it's very hard to find something tiny like this compared to a normal live sound speaker pole. So again, if anybody wants to know the link, I could send them to send it to you. It's it's from England, and the speaker pole is reasonable. It's twenty something dollars, but the, the shipping is forty dollars. Well, so it comes out to like seventy dollars from England. But I do have I did luck out and have a connection uh, that in the states here. If you would like that could, that link. One of the reasons why I rushed to make this video is because 
the, the subwoofer I have has been phased out. There's a new model right here. It's called the S10.4. It does have a different form factor. Right here you can see it's more rectangular. It kind of sits on the side. The port is on the, on the right side and the subwoofer that I'm using, the port is on the bottom. So again, it's a visual thing. These, these specs are, are almost identical, but the price has gone up. It is now $450, and the one that I got was $400. So let's see if I can share with you. So again, here is a picture of the new subwoofer, the rectangular shape. Has a nice uh, yellowish cone that shows through. It has a nice visual look. Okay, here's the subwoofer that I have. It's called the KRK 10S 10 inch powered studio subwoofer. $399. Sweetwater still has it in stock. Uh, many, many uh, internet sales, they don't have it anymore. So that's why one reason I rushed for people who would, would like to get this particular subwoofer, same, basically the same exact specs, $50 cheaper, but it looks different. I kind of like this this look better, more of a cube shape than a rectangular shape. Here are the specs, 10 inch, 160 watts. I go The frequency response goes down to 28 hertz, which is very low. Just to give you an idea, my the sub two that I demonstrated goes down to 37, and that is very low for a live sound subwoofer. But this is a studio subwoofer and producers want to hear every nuance nuance of the low end, so they need something that goes down even lower, but it will not play at the same volumes as a live sound system. It does go up to 117.2 dB, which is pretty loud. It's actually louder than the S1 Pro. The S1 Pro maxes out at 109. So this is a, this is a great match. If you got anything higher, you, can, you can't even, the S1 Pro will, will um, bottom out or will peak out before the subwoofer if you go to something 120 dB or more. So this is, this is really actually a very good match. I, I put a question mark here, it says 34.5 pounds, but uh, let me show you. Here is on a different website and it says 39 pounds. I never weighed it personally, but I, I believe it's, it's 39 pounds. It's, it's a little, kind of a little chunky weight and again, no handles. Here it says 150 watts RMS, and the previous website said 160. So I don't know which to be, what to believe, but what all you really need to know, need, the, the important statistic you need to know, the spec is the 117.2 dB. That's your max volume. Everything else really doesn't matter, and you wanna know how low it goes. So it goes low, it goes loud at that volume. Those are your specs you really wanna focus on. Here is the, the cable I purchased. Nice long cable. Look at that price, $13.69. Very reasonable price. It's available at Guitar Center, and I think it's also available at Walmart. Uh, you don't want to buy it at Amazon right now unless you want to spend another $10. They have it for $24 or so. Same item. That's, that's unusual, Guitar Center beating Amazon. Here's another choice I wanted to share with you. Very, very popular subwoofer. It's been out for a long time. And personally, I've never heard it, but I, I have picked it up at the store. I've seen it. Behringer EuroLive V1200, 500 watts, 12 inch subwoofer. So it's a larger woofer and it's the, pretty much the least expensive at $299, $300, the least expensive live subwoofer that anybody recommends. So again, even cheaper, less expensive than the KRK by $100 or $150 if you get the, the new one. Let's see the specs on the Behringer. Like I said, 12 inch, 500 watts. And there, there's your spec. It goes up to 122 dB. So this is, this is a live sound sub. It goes down to 45. It doesn't quite go as low as, as I mentioned before again as a studio sub. But 45 hertz is, is nice punch for a live sound subwoofer. Give you an idea, the sub one, the Bose sub one goes down to 40, uh, just a little lower, and it's $800. But of course, it's newer technology. Uh, this subwoofer is, isn't 
So light, it's 43 pounds, but it has the handles, it has the pole mount, and I heard, that, what I've read, it has a lot of reviews online if you check it out, but I read the base is a little um, boomy. It's not the cleanest base. So when you go from something like this for $300 to the $800 Bose Sub 1, they, I, I can just tell you there's probably a huge difference. Again, I haven't heard this particular one, but I do own the Sub 1 and it's, it's wonderful. But you, you're gonna pay the difference. I thought I would bring this outside because uh, my whole purpose of building and searching for the, the ultimate micro system is because I, I really do enjoy listening to music outdoors. Uh, I have, brings back good memories. I've seen a number of concerts outdoors. I've seen Steppenwolf. I've seen Yes outdoors. I saw Aerosmith when they first started outdoors. I saw Pink Floyd outdoors, and I saw Todd Rundgren outdoors. Yeah, I've been around for a while. Good memories though. So let's talk price. I've shared, if you've seen my other videos, or you might see it after this, um, I've made a couple of videos on this particular pairing, uh, Sub 1 Pro with a subwoofer. So this particular subwoofer is $400, very reasonable. Um, one of my favorites, or maybe my number one favorite, is the EV ELX 12 for $650, $250 more. It's always, you can always get something more, right? But um, again, for me, it's worth the extra money. It's a, it goes up to 120, 90 B. It's a real live uh, musician subwoofer. It has app control. Instead of a foot switch, it has, um, you can do the AB mute with with the app. In some ways, I like the foot switch better. And then the next subwoofer I, I also purchased is the uh, the new Bose S Sub One, but that's the most expensive at eight hundred dollars. And I pur I purchased that not so much for this mobile system, but to pair up with my Pro Thirty Two. Again, you can see the videos I made about that. So getting back to this particular subwoofer, the KRK KRK Ten S. Um, it's a great pairing for acoustic guitarist who needs just a little of that extra low end. That would be a great pair. This would be a great uh, pair with a, a keyboardist home, who's playing at home and needs extra low end for their keyboard or synthesizer. Again, it's not something you want to gig with in front of uh, 100 people. It's not made for that. And then again, uh, electronic drummers. I play electronic drums myself. Again, someone who has, um, they probably have a top, but maybe a 12 inch speaker. That doesn't give a, the greatest low end. They add something like this, and all of a sudden they have a full range system that the kick drum and the, the low tom, toms will really come out. Again, you're not gonna play in front of a large live audience. If you were, maybe the, the maximum would be uh, 50 people. So I consider this pretty much a best buy with the S1 Pro. The S1 Pro is, in my book is an incredible buy, even though it's it's not cheap at $600. But I, I recently saw the S1 Pro at Best Buy, and I was amazed to see it there because you know they're not a, uh, a live sound experts. They they use, they're more of the consumer amplification. So next to the S1 Pro is the the little Marshall amps, and it's just a, it's just in a different category. But the S1 Pro is a musician speaker, and it performs uh, incredibly well with, with the battery for, for its size, again, for its size. So if you add it up, six, 600 for the S1 Pro, 400 for the KRK sub, a speaker stand, the, the foot switch, you have about $1,100. And in that price range, it, it is very competitive right now. We. In that price range, that exact price, $1,100, you have the Bose uh, Pro 8 that just came out that is supposedly incredible, getting great reviews. You have the EV30M, which is, is wonderful. So you have a lot of competition, uh, but what sets this apart in my, in my eyes is that it's modular. I don't always wanna take a, a 40 pound speaker like the Pro 8 or the EV, the EV, they're both in the 40 pound range. Uh, sometimes I just wanna take a, 
one S1 Pro and throw it in the car and, and uh, have a picnic at the park. I don't need the subwoofer in that case. And you couldn't do that with the other speakers. The other speakers, I mean, you could do it, um, but you would, you would need at that point a external power source because they're not battery operated and, and they are considerably heavier at 40 pounds compared to the Bose 16. So most people, I, I wouldn't recommend to get, run out and get these two pieces. I'm thinking more of this video for the people who have the S1 Pro and so many people do have it adding the subwoofer basically any subwoofer to the s1 pro just um, brings it to the next level highly recommended to add a subwoofer if you read the reviews and there's a lot of them out there uh, one of the common things that people state is they're just amazed when they first hear it just how loud this thing is in the home so again you might want to consider this for a, uh, a computer Desktop system, this would add incredible low end. You put this under the table, it'd be a great choice. Or even, um, most people wouldn't consider this, but even a home theater subwoofer. It does have RCA inputs. And again, for that price, $400, you, you can't go wrong. It would just shake the theater. I think we're ready for our sound test. Keep in mind, I'm gonna be using the Fender Bypass foot switch. I'm going to be a being with bass without so you can see the difference there will be a, a little light on the subwoofer if you look carefully I'm gonna do it right now when I engage the subwoofer the light comes on nice and bright when I click it again it goes off so right now it's off on so keep that watch for that and I'm gonna be using my hand to, to engage the uh, foot switch. Normally you'd use this on the floor, but right now I'm gonna be using it uh, with my hand only. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm using a track that I created through GarageBand. You might've heard this before in other videos. I'm using the same track so you can compare it to other systems. And I created this um, from GarageBand so there's no copyright infringement. Let me reset the dB meter. you heard that it was significant difference when I cut in the subwoofer it added all that low end fullness that's missing from the s1 pros taking nothing away from the s1 pros that high end is crystal clear but it is it's a small speaker and when you add a small subwoofer like this it makes all the difference in the world okay we're gonna do another track again it's a track that I created on GarageBand reset the DB meter track 
is not by myself. I got it off of YouTube. Again, it's a track that is non-copyrighted and it's a lot better recorded than my previous tracks. I had to turn it down considerably. My tracks I was playing at about three o'clock before clipping and this track I had to turn it down one notch um, below 12 noon. So it's, it has some really nice heavy bass. And again, I wanna emphasize that all these tracks I'm playing are right before a clipping. I don't wanna damage the speaker or push them. Uh, and definitely because um, the speaker I'm using is, is pretty new. Okay, here we go. Next track. Again, keep your eye on the, the subwoofer. I'm gonna be in A being it, engaging it, and disengaging so you can hear the with and without that low end, bottom end, adding to the S1 Pro. is just adding that low end it sounds wonderful uh, for the people who want to know how I'm setting my levels what I'm doing is turning up my source which is my iPad to pretty much maximum 95% and then I'm um, using hearing protection and I go behind the s1 pro on Bluetooth channel 3 and I start at zero and I start I slowly bring it up until I see red clipping and then I bring it down a notch, so the zero clipping at its maximum volume. Okay, last track. Again, a YouTube track. on that track okay I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, it's this is a wonderful micro system and that subwoofer is very reasonable in price and it performs and that foot switch I do not know why other companies don't incorporate that in their subwoofers it's a great feature okay until the next video I hope you enjoyed